In 1994, three amateur filmmakers went to hunting for a local legend in the woods outside Burkittsville, Maryland. They were never seen again, but a year later their footage was discovered, where it was revealed that they became lost in the woods and were hunted down by an unseen force known only as the Blair Witch. If you're anything but a complete idiot, you'll know by now that this was totally fake, but it sure fooled audiences back in 1999. It was the first time we'd ever seen a horror movie filmed with a handheld camera, and it changed the face of low-budget horror forever. I'm Connor Zagari. And I'm Austin Johnson. And you're listening to Filmgasm. Happy Wednesday, listeners. Diving into our first found footage movie of the podcast, certainly not our last, The Blair Witch Project, a divisive movie among fans. Some swear by its fear factor, others think it hasn't aged well, with everyone knowing it's just a movie. Regardless, we're going to tell the story of this landmark horror flick that started an entire subgenre and, in the right circumstances, is still insanely creepy. I like to think that without Blair Witch, there would be no paranormal activity, no record, no VHS, no creep, no unfriended, and so on. Hope you enjoyed last week's Exorcist Extravaganza, as well as our Friday episode on the French Connection. Had a lot of fun doing those episodes. And uh, we have one quick update on the Rewind, and uh, why don't you take it away? Oh, man. I, I, I got an interesting story. I was just telling Connor before I had to share it here. Uh, going back to, we talked about what, on episode 15, 15. the Coens? Maybe or 20? 25? 20, somewhere. There's so many at this point. I don't know, man. <laughs> we talked about the Coens a long time ago. We're going to always bring them up because they're two of our favorite filmmakers of all time. Uh, you know, Big Lebowski. If you don't know who the Coens are, sorry. Yeah. Uh, you know, they made a movie in 2009 called A Serious Man. And this movie was filmed in Minnesota, like in the heart of Minnesota. Um, and they filmed a lot of it at, if you've seen it, I know you have, Connor. Oh, yes. Uh, it's filmed a lot at, there's a, at a school that would be, you know, Roseville. And that's a school that my older brother's girlfriend went to. <laughs> I just found this out because they were visiting from Minnesota. They both live in St. Paul, downtown St. Paul. Shout out to Jeremy and Alex. Love you guys. Hope you guys make it safely back home. Um, so she went to that school, and they filmed a lot of it there, you know, and she's, like, talking to me about this, you know, because she knows I love a serious man. She's like, yeah, I, I like, know some of the people in it, you know. And I'm like, <laughs> what? What? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> you know, and she's, like, showing, you know, showing me on IMDb, showing me, you know, there's pictures of, like, I'm like, oh, my God, like, that's, yeah, like, I, I know these characters, you know. And she's like, yeah, that's Andrew, you know, like, I know him, you know. My brother's like, yeah, yeah, I know that guy. I'm like, what? <laughs> Let's, you know, you know these, these characters from this movie I'm like obsessed with? I was like, hey, can you, I know this is probably weird. I know they're, they're just kids in it, but can you get, like, I'll send it back to you guys. Do you guys ever hang out with them? They're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, like, we definitely see Andrew a lot, which is a kid who has a hilarious line in the movie where he says the F word. And he's like, that fucking flagpole. <laughs> hilarious. And, you know, they know that guy. And so he's going to autograph it for me and they're going to send it back. That's awesome. Very random signature, but, uh. I'm excited about that because I love that movie. You know, you know it's very dear to my heart. I'm, oh, yeah. I'm obsessed with it. It, it appeared like on number six on my um, top top ten of the 2000s when we did that a few weeks ago. Yeah, just so cool. Very excited. <laughs> it's such a random piece of, you know, of, of history. I'm, I'm so surprised I didn't know that yet because she knows I love that movie and my brother knows I love that movie. Oh, yeah. But uh, now I know. That's great. Um, the Coens were, you know, very, very Minnesota. You know, that's... Obviously, that's you know their bread and butter, and that's cool. uh, yeah, that's where that's where my, my brother and his girlfriend live. You know, it's a little, little piece of history. That's cool. Yeah. In, In that same vein, I recently found out my aunt Heather uh, knew some of the kids from Dead Poet Society. What? Yeah, I found that out uh, last week. Like from the yeah from the class. Holy. Apparently, she hung out with a couple of them, come, uh, a couple of the background character kids. Oh man. So. <laughs> wow. She's had a, such a strange run of celebrities that yeah. she didn't really know. She ran into John Paul Jones and didn't know who he was. She babysat for one of the Hart sisters. Like, yeah, she just has these weird what? interactions. Oh, man. <laughs> you know, I mean, she was living in Seattle at the height of the grunge era, so, you know, yeah, yeah. popular area for random celebrities. Cool. <laughs> I love little, little stories like that. It's well. great, you know. It's fantastic. Fun. It makes the world feel a little smaller. It makes oh, it yeah. a little more accessible, and you know. Yeah, it's great. Love when movies do that, too. Oh, for sure. So, yeah, other than that, nothing, nothing happened 
this week in past episodes. But no. I do think there's enough meat on this film to fill a full episode. So without further ado, let's dig in. What was your experience with the Blair Witch Project going in? Uh, I've seen the Blair Witch uh, Project probably ten times now. Uh, I watched it twice over this past week because I have, quite frankly, never liked it. Uh, I'll just go ahead and say that up front. It's not. It's just not for me. Uh, found footage is not really for me either. Um, it's not so much that I don't like that it's you know that it's shaky. It just it seems like all the films that fall under under that category, I just don't really like the story, or I don't like the. Usually, it's the characters that I don't like. Uh, Creep is an exception. I think Creep is awesome. I think Creep 2 is awesome. Uh, those are kind of off the wall and a little, little bit wackier than the rest of the... Yeah. You, know, you mentioned, you know, Paranormal Activity. Those are just... They're silly. They're funny to me. You know, they're, they're just silly. Cloverfield? Yeah. Not for me. Uh, yeah. And, and this movie, I, I, I respect the absolute hell out of it because of this main fact about the movie that it had a budget of $60,000 and made $250 million and still makes a lot of money on DVD sales oh, yeah. and royalties and things like that. And it's been on streaming services and always will be. Uh, just It's like a legend, legendary piece of, of the horror genre. Yeah. I totally understand that. But for me as a fan, it just doesn't really... There's no part of it that really grabs me. Um, again, these three characters, not my... Not my cup of tea, especially being the age we are now. Had I seen it in the, in the theater in 1999 and been like, whoa, 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 was that real? Yeah. I'm sure I had a whole different take. But, you know, yeah. I, you know, I was four years old when it came out. So I saw it when I was in middle school and I saw it a few more times in high school. And I've watched it periodically to give it more chances, quite frankly, because I think, I think I'm kind of in the minority uh, of, of horror fans. I wouldn't say that. You don't think so? I think this is a very mixed movie. Yeah. I think a lot of people love it, and a lot of people are kind of done with it. Yeah. I think this is the kind of movie that really, like, it was at the top of the horror genre for, like, six months. Yeah, I guess I'm in between that. I guess I'd be in between that because I keep giving it, uh, like, chances. Yeah. Because I have that, like, because I know what it's, you know, I know the stature that it has. You want to like it. I do. It's like Dr. Pepper. I hate Dr. Pepper, but I, really? I, I want to like Dr. Pepper so bad because it's Ooh. fucking everywhere. You just lost major points with Caleb. Uh, oh, <laughs> no. Everybody. Everybody. Oh, Who do you know that hates I've Dr. Only, Pepper? I've only ever seen him drink Dr. Pepper. Yeah. A lot of... Yeah, my older brother, Jeremy, who I've talked about already, the guy from Minnesota, yeah, he's, that's all he drinks as far as <laughs> soda goes. Ooh. It's just not my thing. Yeah. But you, you, it's one of those things. I, yeah, it's, yeah. I just want to like it. But They're I, rich. It's the Dr. Pepper of horror movies. For me, yeah. I... Yeah, I, I don't know what else I can say about it. That wouldn't be redundant, honestly. I just, it's just not totally for me. Yeah. Um, I'm very interested to get into the actual story here, though, and hear your, yeah. your take on it, because I know you felt similarly. I did. And then you watched it again, and you're like, actually. I had a, a strange awakening. I, was, I saw the light. I was reborn. Hallelujah. So what I, I have saw- seen the light! <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. It was crazy. All right. So, so I've seen, seen this is for the podcast, podcast my, my third, third time watching this. The, the first two times, I didn't like this at all. I thought it was boring. I thought it wasn't scary. I thought it was ridiculous. The third time, I watched it alone in my apartment at night, all the lights off, and this movie scared the absolute shit out of me. I've never, I didn't expect that at all, and here I am, a changed man. At the end of The Exorcist last week, we both said, we fucking hate this and we're going to tear it apart. But now it is up to me to defend this movie. I never, I never thought, thought I'd be saying, saying that, but I, I really liked it. <laughs> Hell yeah. Oh my God. Well, what, um, <laughs> what about it did you not like specifically the first couple times? Like you, you thought it was, you thought it was boring, so which I think, which I think is a common thing for most yeah. people. Most people are just like, eh, it's kind of boring. Yeah. Cause they're not totally paying attention. I don't think it's boring. Um, my biggest gripe the first time I saw this, I wanted to see The Witch. Okay. That was my okay. biggest gripe. I okay. didn't have the same, you know, I was experienced palette I do now. Mm-hmm. I didn't have, I wasn't willing to accept atmosphere. Yeah. Back then I was like, show me a scary monster or rip somebody's head off or I'm leaving. <laughs> and Action, yeah. Yeah. Now I'm like, you know, whatever I was imagining, the mind infinitely scarier than anything they could have put on the camera. What do you imagine when you... 
watch the Blair Witch? Like, what do you see as the Blair Witch? Just a just kind of typical pale white, like a like Tony Collette in the Hereditary type. Oh, okay. Yeah, like when she's floating, you know, that kind yeah. of thing. Just kind of pale, ghostly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's what I see. What about you? I see kind of a uh, Sylvia Ganoush and Drag Me to Hell. Okay. That's okay. what I see. Okay. That, but like floating. <laughs> and, and, I, and of course, of course, now that we have 2015's The Witch, yeah, I think about that witch a yeah. lot because I love that movie, and that witch is, is frightening. So yeah, that's a terrifying. That's kind of like movie. my witch. Like that's the ultimate witch. Is like whoa, yeah, no oh, thanks, yeah. you know. Very cool. Yeah, like I said, you know, this is a movie that's open to so many different interpretations. Yeah, it's. I think it's very smart how they like the way they created this, and. They're still, still making, making, you know, as Austin said, royalties and uh, oh my franchise. Gosh. Like, they franchise this thing. Yeah, I saw some weird, weird statistic where they get, they made some crazy deal with their DVDs where they get like a bigger percentage than most. Yeah, and you're like, man, that's just smart shit. You know, that's yeah. that's knowing knowing that you're like, we're gonna find an audience. Oh yeah, because yeah, they they knew what they were doing. Yeah, the Blair Witch Project was released in 1999, but development began back in '93. When film students Daniel Murick and Eduardo Sanchez became inspired to make a scary movie based on paranormal documentaries that they watched, as they noticed that they tended to be scarier than traditional horror movies. They decided to combine the atmosphere of a horror movie with the realism of a documentary. Arguably, the full, not the first time this had been done, but definitely the most popular yeah, at yeah, the time. Yeah. Oh, there's always going to be those people out there who are like, actually... There's a movie that yeah, came but it, out. Yeah, but it do, did it do anything? You know? no. <laughs> There's a movie that came out the year before this that, off the top of my head, I don't remember the name of the movie. It was like The Lost Something, but it was almost the same damn story. Oh. And amazingly, the guy didn't sue. He said, like, the audience who likes The Blair Witch Project will probably like my movie too. Talk about pragmatic. <laughs> As a horror fan, right there. So he's just happy to be part of it. Ugh. So their screenplay was 35 pages long, with the dialogue intended to be improvised along the way. Yeah. It was all just shooting script. Yeah. That takes some balls. Yeah, no kidding. The three lead actors share the names of their characters, Heather Donahue, Josh Leonard, and Mike Williams. Here's some brief info on the three of them. Heather Donahue would go on to have a recurring role in the Taken TV series. Josh Leonard would go on to appear in a number of films I've never heard of, as well as have a recurring role on the TV shows Bates Motel, Togetherness, Heartbeat, Startup, and Scorpion. Mike Williams would appear in a handful of movies I've never heard of, namely a host of low-budget horror and sci-fi movies. So it's not like nobody became a star from this. The three of them found steady work over the years, but nobody... This was their biggest thing. This will always be their biggest thing. Yeah. The film opens with interviews for the, from the townsfolk of Burkittsville who discuss the legend of the Blair Witch. Some of these town folks, uh, townsfolk were actors that were planted by the directors unbeknownst to the cast. The actors filmed the movie themselves, learning how to operate a camera as they went along. And they were told they're making a real documentary. Yeah. So it's weird, this whole... There's like a, nobody really knew what this was. No. Yeah. At, at any level, except the two guys, Sanchez and Merrick. Yeah. Weird. It's like a it's like a social experiment for them. It really was. Yeah. The smartest thing that American Sanchez did was launch a highly successful marketing campaign using the internet, making the Blair Witch Project the first movie to use the internet as a marketing tool. Yeah. Successfully, anyway. They made a website for the film featuring fake police reports, missing posters for the three leads, and interviews about the Blair Witch. The Blair Witch, by the way, is not an actual myth. It's not a real legend. They made this shit up. Yeah. This, this technique sparked discussion about whether the Blair Witch Project was a fictional horror movie or real footage about an actual disappearance. And amazingly, the debate still continues. Some people still think this shit's real. I know. After everything. I know. After all this. After two sequels and a fucking video game, 20 years still later, think this yeah. is real. Yeah. Amazing. So was there ever a time where you thought this was real? No. Even as like a kid hearing about it? No, just 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 the internet. I just too much. Read too much. Yeah. I thought this was real. The first well, and... and I had IMDb, I remember, on my phone at such a young age that I just, like, looked and I was like, oh, they're, like, actors. When I was, like, four or five years old, my mom had this on tape. And oh, I read, nice. I read the back of the tape and I thought, oh, my God, this I, is real. This I really happened. happened. Four or five years old. Geez. And she wouldn't let me watch it, obviously. Yeah. She's a good mom. 
And it, it took me a good Yeah, but she years. let you watch the thing when you were like, what? Eight or nine. nine. Yeah. Eight. We can't win them all, okay? <laughs> oh, I love it. No, but I see, love it. Where I lived in Maryland looked exactly like those woods. Mm-hmm. I lived basically in those woods. Yeah. So that shit was my backyard, so I'm very happy she didn't let me see that. Because that would have sure. fucked with me on a yeah, you wouldn't, primordial you wouldn't level. ever want to go into those woods. I would be a completely different person right now. <laughs> so good on you, Mom. But uh, she hates this movie, too. I don't know why she had it. <laughs> Your mom hates it? She hates this movie. Yeah. For the same rep, she thinks it's boring. Same reason everyone hates it. Yeah. The Blair Witch Project has an IMDb score of 6.5, Rotten Tomatoes score of 87%, and it's one of the most successful independent films of all time, grossing $250 million on a budget of only sixty grand. It spawned two sequels, a comic book series, and a video game. It's the little horror franchise that could. It's amazing. I've never played the, I haven't played the game. It came out last year. I don't plan to. And, uh... Yeah, I guess we'll go into the plot. Let's, let's do this. <laughs> so, three film students are going to Burkittsville, Maryland to make a documentary on the Blair Witch. Heather Donahue is uh, directing this. It's her idea. It's her baby. For some reason, I don't think it's ever... Is this for film class or something? Does it ever make clear why she's doing this? Uh, I don't remember, to be honest. <laughs> Because, yeah, uh, yeah, it just says that they set out to produce a documentary about the Blair Witch, yeah. Her main cameraman is Josh Leonard, and her sound guy is Mike Williams. And from the beginning, you get the feeling that he doesn't give a fuck. He doesn't want to be here. And... I Yeah. Yeah. Mike, 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 Mike. <laughs> oh, you piece of shit. <laughs> yeah. The whole beginning of this movie is them going to Burkittsville, talking to local people about this Blair Witch. Everybody's got a different story about what this thing is. Yeah. Some say it's a ghost. Some say it's a serial killer. Some say it's a demon. Some say it's all all over the fucking place. But what IMDb says is, according to legend, the Blair Witch is the ghost of Ellie Kedward of the late 1700s, who several children accused of luring them into her home to draw blood from them. Kedward was found guilty of witchcraft, banished from the village, and presumed dead. By midwinter, all of Kedward's accusers, along with half the town's children, vanished. Fearing a curse, the townspeople flee the town of Blair and vow never to utter Ellie Kedward's name again. So, already, cool setup. That's a cool idea. Mm-hmm. So she was very clearly a witch. And... In 1825, 11 witnesses testify to seeing a pale woman's hand reach up and pull 10-year-old Eileen Treacle into Tappy East Creek. Her body is never recovered, and for 13 days after the drowning, the creek is clogged with oily bundles of sticks. In 1886, 8-year-old Robin Weaver is reported missing, and search parties are dispatched. Although Weaver returns, one of the search parties does not. Their bodies are found weeks later at Coffin Rock, Tied together at the arms and legs and disemboweled. I don't remember any of this shit from the movie. Where are they getting this? Yeah. But all right, I'll keep going. In 1941, starting with Emily Hollins, a total of seven children are abducted from the area surrounding Burkittsville. I really don't know what this is. Is this like... like? I guess this is in, in-depth background knowledge. Cool. I don't care. Yeah, right on. Yeah. A hermit named Rustin Parr walks into a local market and tells the people there okay. that he is finally finished. I remember this. Yeah, okay, there's Rustin Parr. Yeah. That's the hermit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's the hermit you find out in the, bo- in the movie. After yeah. the police hike for four hours to his secluded house in the woods, they find the bodies of seven missing children in the cellar. Each child has been ritualistically murdered and disemboweled. Always disemboweled. Parr admits to everything in detail, telling authorities that he did it for, quote, an old woman ghost who occupied the woods near his house. He is quickly convicted and hanged. And he's the guy who would send the kids into the corner, kill the other kid, and then kill the kid in the corner. And that thing in the corner, uh, it's creepy to me. Really, yeah. Yes, indeed. <laughs> so the three filmmakers interview the people of Burkittsville learning all this shit. And they like being on camera. They're like, oh, you're talking about our town? Oh, the Blair Witch. Oh, we all know about the Blair Witch. It's like this local goofy thing. But everyone's still, like, I like that, even though these aren't actors, they're mostly just real townsfolk, or at least not professional actors. Yeah. There's still an undercut of menace. Like, they're laughing it off, but at the same time, they're not going anywhere fucking near the woods. Yeah, no, it's like, hey. Yeah, but yeah. I don't go there, though. No, I like that. Me too. That, that, that definitely creates a cool atmosphere. Yeah. 
that, that cool. just instilling that fear. Yeah. Oh, so cool. Oh yeah. So she interviews Mary Brown, uh, Heather. She interviews Mary Brown, an elderly and kind of nuts woman who has lived in the area all her life and claims that she saw the Blair Witch one day near Tappy Creek in the form of a hairy, half-human, half-animal beast. So do you think the Blair Witch is a squatch? Because it could be. It could be a squatch. Probably not a squatch. No, no. But yeah, it could be. I mean, why not? I might be wrong. It could be fucking anything. It could be me. It doesn't, you know, it's nothing. But it could be Josh. They, yeah. <laughs> they give you so many options. Like, it's a witch, it's a serial killer, it's a Sasquatch, like, it's, yeah. it's a ghost. It's everywhere. And then they go talk to these fishermen, and uh, they tell them that Coffin Rock is less than 20 minutes from town. And the one guy's like, I wouldn't go out there. You dumbass kids don't know what you're doing. I don't, don't. Like, he's trying to be quiet, but also he wants them to hear him. <laughs> it's, it's funny. And then he gets all cordial, like, oh, well, I don't mind talking. Yeah, you can use my likeness. Very strange guy. And the three decide to make the woods of the Blair Witch the centerpiece of their film. Yeah. Big mistake. <laughs> Indeed. Yeah. Indubitably. But this is, uh, you know, this is what uh, young people in horror movies do. Yeah. They make shitty, shitty, shitty decisions. Imagine. And go places they just have no business being. Imagine how short this movie would be if Heather just admitted she didn't know how to use a map. <laughs> there you go. The whole first half of the movie yeah. is her leading them to fucking nowhere. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> that fucking map. Jesus. We'll get to it, yeah. Yeah. So, the three of them get comp- get wasted at their motel, have like a last hurrah before they go into the, into the woods. They have a map of the logging trail. They hike a few miles into the woods, and apparently the woods are, they seem way bigger than they did from outside. One thing that's interesting about how they handle the woods, the woods are a character in this movie. Oh, yeah. The, the it's best, always changing. The, the best character. You never know if they're really lost or if the woods are keeping them there. Yeah, if it's like just turning. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I think the Blair Witch is like a demon who controls the woods. That's just me. I haven't seen Book of Shadows, so I can't tell you. <laughs> uh, so after hiking a few miles, they filmed the creek where the Coffin Rock Massacre occurred. And... Satisfied with their footage, the three, they set up their tent and it starts to rain. And they're all still, you know, happy about this. They're still, you know, oh, this is fun. This is interesting. And the next morning, Josh claims he heard strange noises during the night, including uh, some cackling, which is, I would wake everybody up if I heard cackling in the woods. Hey, guys. Uh, while we're shooting a documentary on a, on a witch? Yeah. <laughs> God, that's not something I just wait till the next day. To tell people about no, no. It really takes them a while like, to realize go back to sleep. how severe their situation is. Yeah. It would, it would. It would take me two minutes to be like, all right. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't go in the woods. So yeah. No, I would no. I can do the whole documentary without ever setting foot in there. Yeah. It's called stock footage. <laughs> Look into it, Heather. God damn. <laughs> yeah, Heather. It's, it's your, your fault. fault. <laughs> it's one hundred percent her fault. Well, until, until Mike trashes the map, but we'll get to that. That map. So, looking th- at the map, the team decides to press on further into the woods in search of a, an old graveyard. But Josh and Mike start getting a little concerned about whether or not Heather's accurately reading this map. But she's, you know, no, I got it. I know exactly what I'm doing. Yeah, don't question me. I'm the director. Let me direct. You hold the camera. Whew. And uh, she had already gotten them lost before, like in a little bit, the previous day yeah, on the yeah. creek. So they're still in high spirits, they're joking about each other, and Heather is still confident that they're on the right trail, they're going to get to the graveyard in an hour and a half. But it soon becomes pretty clear that they're lost. Yes. Tensions begin to rise. And the audience starts to get annoyed with Heather. <laughs> a little bit more. Both men start resenting... That Heather still has the camera on while yeah. they're lost. Yeah, no kidding. No, <laughs> piss me off. She's like, no, I want to use this. Yeah. We're all no. going to look back on this and laugh. No. No, you're not. <laughs> no, we're not. Because you don't know how to read a map, and this fucking idiot trashed the map. Ah, Josh, feel bad for you, man. Ugh. So they press on. They cross the river over a log bridge. They find a clearing 
but they find a whole bunch of little piles of rocks stacked on the ground. And Heather recalls something that Mary Brown had said about a pile of rocks in the Bible, but can't exactly remember what it is. They find seven piles of stones in all. There were seven kids who were killed by that Rustin Parr guy. Yep. So something is up. And seven, seven is like in the Bible like a thousand times. You know, it's like one of those numbers. Yeah. So yeah, it's not a good number to have, mm. you know. Well, that, 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 they don't react how I would react to that. I would kick all those rocks over, you know. I'd be like, fuck all these, we're leaving. We got to get out of here. No, I wouldn't touch that shit. I, I, would, I don't want to piss I this would. woman off. I would fucking, yeah, I'd get rid of, yeah, no way. No way would I allow them to, to put those... Uh, yeah, no. I the last thing shit. I want to do in the haunted woods is piss off the ghost. I, I can't... <laughs> watching so many horror films, I can't submit to... You know, I, I can't let, let, the, let the, uh, the idea, the witch, win. You know, I can't let them win. And if I... If we let those stand... You let those rocks stand. Who knows what those represent, man? We got to get those out of here. The thing about this movie now, is... Now, I'm thinking yeah. we're not lost yet, though. We're so not, I'm, thinking, yeah. I'm thinking, like, all right, let's kick these over. Let's get the hell out of here. See, but they're lost. The so, I, so yeah, yeah, if I would have known them lost, then I probably wouldn't kick them over. Because then you're like, wait a minute, they'll probably pop up in another place. <laughs> the way I see it is, the second they walked into, that, into those woods, their fate was out of their control. They were lost immediately. And the witch was fucking them around the entire time, playing with them. Like you said, it was like a, her game, yeah. Yeah, this is all part, you know, they don't, townsfolk don't go in the woods, so she doesn't get to do this very often. I'm the master and you're the puppets. Yeah, yeah. so she got to have some fun for a few days. Yeah. <laughs> Creepy. So that night, they build a fire, cook some food, tensions dissipating a little. And during the night, Heather takes them back to the rocks to film more footage, and one of them knocks over a pile of rocks. <laughs> There you go. And then later, the trio starts hearing strange noises from the woods, and they set off to investigate. Those were some creepy-ass sounds. Some shrieking. Mm-hmm. And that's... Goddamn. I wanted more of that. Mm-hmm. I wanted just more of that chaos. That was, know, those are the coolest parts to me. I'm such a big fan of the film Willow Creek that I keep expecting Bigfoot to show up in this movie. It's set up so well to yeah. be a great Bigfoot movie, but they never do it. Ah, oh, damn it. Blair Witch could have been a squash. It's good... And you could add like 40 minutes of just fucking like crazy yeah. shit. Yeah. Well, I guess Bobcat did that because Willow Creek is this yeah, exact yeah, movie yeah, yeah. with a Bigfoot. <laughs> and it's probably around two hours. Yeah. And significantly, well, I don't know if better, but on par for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I would, I, I like it better. And you say on par. So yeah, that's, that's fair. I like it. Oh. So something's, something's moving around, around them. The, the sound is traveling yes. in, a, like in a circle around them, but not in an even circle. And it's one of those noises you can't tell where the sound is exactly coming from. That's the creepiest. That, the, yeah, again, that, that's off to the atmosphere because when you don't know where the thing is that, that's haunting you at night, yeah. whew, is it 50 yards away? Is it right next to me? You know, it's and they immediately go straight to, oh, it's the townsfolk fucking with us. But Mike still does not want to leave the tent to go look for it. No. Which is smart. I wouldn't want to leave the tent either. Next, Day, yeah, we need daylight. Yeah. yeah. Next morning, it's raining, and the trio start discussing the events of the night. Josh suggests the noises are caused by the local rednecks. Mike agrees. And what they're worried about is that if someone was prepared to come this far into the woods just to screw with them, they must be ready to do anything. They must be really messed up. In the head, which that's creepy in itself. That's scary. Being yeah. trapped in the woods by the locals, being trapped in the woods by a ghost. I want to see that movie. Being, Not kidding. That would be a, an insane movie of like weird backwards, you know, people like, yeah, and some, you know, a bunch of hermits who are like just attacking these kids. Oh. Deliverance. That's that movie. Deliverance right? is good. I have not seen Deliverance. I like Deliverance, but yeah, I guess I want some, some modern. That would be cool. It'd be fun. <laughs> oh, yeah. Again, you can read this movie in so many different ways. It might not be supernatural at all. It might just be the town People folk. fucking with it. Yeah, this might be some kind of like Wicker Man situation where it's, you know, the, you must appease the Blair Witch. That would be an interesting take on this movie. Yeah. Ooh. I think I just stumbled onto gold. <laughs> so, they start heading back to the car, they think. Heather still is insisting she knows exactly where they are, exactly where they're going. 
But as the day progresses and they have not yet gotten back to the car, tensions start getting worse. And as the day turns into the night, Heather suggests they camp. And Mike is getting particularly pissed off about this. Heather still maintains they're not that far from where they left the car. If she, if she would just admit she doesn't know what she's doing. And uh, but that's, that, that's where like you're like, all right, Heather, what, what are your intentions with all this? But at the same time, at this point, she's in too deep that if she admits whether, that she doesn't know and that she's never known, any little sliver of hope is dead. So she's, she's got to be holding on to something. Yeah. Because she knows she doesn't know what she's doing. And then that night, they hear the noises again. And this time they go outside to see what's causing it. And they hear what apparently are trees being knocked over and other strange sounds. Oof. Josh suggests it's probably deer. Heather's not convinced. And she notes that it's all, it's on all sides of us. Yes. Everywhere. Yes. And it sounds like footsteps. Yeah. That's the best, dude. Oof. It's on all sides of us. That's the best. <laughs> Cause you don't know. You don't know. Mm. Is it a stampede? Is it one force? Yeah. Is it a spirit? What's going on? <laughs> uh, the power of horror. Oh, it's great. Next, Next morning, they find three piles of rocks that mysteriously appeared overnight surrounding their tent. They've been marked. Yeah. That's what this means. Officially. Heather films them, pissing off Mike and Josh. <laughs> They're like, why are you still making a movie? We're going to die. <laughs> Which, yeah, admittedly, Hurts this movie's realism. For sure. But For sure. maybe it just speaks to her arrogance. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, obviously she's, yeah. yeah. And they just want to go home. But things are about to get worse. The map's gone. <laughs> Nobody knows what happened to the map. Heather insists she gave it to Josh. And Josh and Mike are both saying, you know, no. We gave it back. It's not, you know, it's what did you do with the map? So nobody knows what happened to the map. And now they're completely lost, and they have no way of finding their way back to the car. Josh implies that Heather has deliberately lost or hidden it in order to keep them all in the woods to finish her movie. Oof. And that pisses her off, big time. So they're unwilling to give up. They follow the creek, hoping that that's going to lead them somewhere, which is a sound plan. Josh reasons that someone's going to look for them when they realize they're not there. His girlfriend or his mom... Or her boyfriend, somebody's going to realize they're not back. I mean, woods are a big place, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So many pe- hundreds of thousands of people disappear in the woods. I mean, I was looking at a map of, of like, disappearances just in the U.S. Uh-huh. And there's so many, like, people just vanish in, you know, hundreds of miles of unmapped forest. Oh, and they never find their way back. And it's not a ghost. It's not a demon. It's not aliens. It's just people lost. And they just keep, you know, they go in circles. They never find their way home. They get attacked by a bear or squash. Yeah. 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 It's creepy. No food, no water. Yeah. There might be no monster at all. They might just be losing their fucking minds. Yeah. Did you never see them eat? No. And, yeah, and her, her whole... Like like you said, her her knowing that she doesn't know what she's doing, and that arrogance is like, man, what 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 is what are your intentions? What's going on? You know? Yeah, it's crazy. What do you get out of this by pretending you're fu- you, yeah. You're, yeah you're just as fucked as they are. Mm-hmm. Creepy. <laughs> so they come to a river again. Proves difficult to cross. They're already pissed off. So Mike starts behaving a little less rational. And Heather gets angry when they laugh at her when her shoes become waterlogged. And Josh is like, no, we're laughing at the situation. Calm down. And that's when Mike hysterically admits that he threw the map into the creek as he felt it was useless. Whew. Fuck, man. Yeah. Why? I, I, yeah, I don't know. What was his... Do you think that's the witch? Or do you think that's Mike just... Being a dick. Just losing his mind? I don't know. No. I don't know. I, yeah. I, I, oh, my God. I would I would punch that guy in the face, man. I would just be so mad. Well, Mike and Josh nearly come to blows. Oh, yeah. Heather screams abuse at Mike, and she becomes hysterical. She's officially broken, and the relationship between the three is now pretty much gone. It's every man for himself at this point. They waste time arguing over who's going to hold the compass and just blaming each other for various things. 
They keep they continue south for a while. Mike and Josh simply stop, refuse to go any further. In a nearby clearing, Mike finds a bunch of strange stick figures hanging from trees. Yeah. This was creepy as shit. And there's dozens of them. They're in shapes of, like, weird symbols. They're shaped like people. And Heather films the totems for a while before Mike and Josh demand that they get the hell out of there. <sighs> creepy. So many elements of so many different things. Yeah. Some voodoo there. Mm -hmm. It's creepy. I don't know why that stick figure is so creepy. It's just so, like, elemental. Kind of ominous, yeah. Extremely. And, uh... Mike starts screaming hysterically for help. And, real, you know, he thinks that the quote-unquote rednecks who are after them came in there and fashioned the, the figures just to freak them out. Which, and that's got to be a best-case scenario. <laughs> You're right. Yeah. I would be happy about that. Oof. I mean, I can fight rednecks. I can't fight. Yeah. Yeah, I have a chance. Yeah. yeah. I can't fight a, a witch ghost. No. Oh. A, a witch. A ghost. I don't know. I can't do it. That night, they decide not to light a fire in order not to draw attention to themselves. They extinguish all their lights. Yet again, they're woken up by the sounds, including what appears to be a screaming baby. As they're listening, the tents start shaking, and they all three flee into the night, still filming. Of course. <laughs> and you just you see the camera shaking in the darkness. You hear Heather screaming like, what the fuck is that? Over and over again. I would love to know what the fuck that was. Me too. But you didn't film it, Heather. You filmed everything else. Yeah. This whole movie. Ugh. <laughs> so they spend the rest of the night just cowering in the darkness. At daybreak, they return to their tent where Josh finds that all of his stuff's been scattered around the woods. And they're covered with a weird slimy substance. Which, at first I was like, what the fuck is that? And then I realized, fucking ectoplasm. Yeah. It's a ghost. Yeah. <laughs> Changes the game. Oh, yeah. And they find another one of those stick figures. And this time, all right, now they're sick of Heather filming everything. Mike attacks Heather. <laughs> Tries to get her camera. And nope, doesn't get it. They press on. Josh is now on the verge of losing it. He's moody. He's depressed. He's scared. He wanders off to sit on his own. Mike and Heather forge kind of an uneasy alliance where they're like, look, we got to hold this together. The fact that they're giving Mike the time of day at all at Blow, this point blows my mind. Yeah, just leave him in the woods. Like, yeah. go, you know, run, go do your own thing. Leave this fucker. I would probably at, at some point I would lose my mind and I'd probably just start running. Yeah, kill, kill Mike in a for, straight yeah. line. Like, kill oh, Mike, eat him for sustenance. <laughs> it's the best you can do. <laughs> Clearly, I shouldn't end up lost in the woods with anybody. No, I hope we're not ever in that, yeah. I mean, it's been, what, two days? I'm already resorting to cannibalism? <laughs> no, we still have food. I don't care. <laughs> I've always wanted to do this, okay? Give me my chance. <laughs> Jesus. That's uh, great. So, <laughs> Mike argues that whatever's stalking them is going to come back, and they got to keep moving. Heather maintains that it's impossible for somebody to vanish in America. God damn. What university does she go to? Because I don't think she's going to get that degree. No, nah, probably not. That is one of the stupidest statements I've ever heard in my probably life. Probably not. We, we just, just talked about the amount of people who go wandering in the national parks, end up lost and never seen again. Yeah. The people disappear in America quite often. Later, they come to a river, and they realize it's the same river they tried to get across the previous day. They have been going in circles for a day. Yes. And they all break very fast. Mike rushes off, screaming. Heather collapses into tears. Now they're desperate. They have no idea where to go. <laughs> They've been heading south all day, and they ended up right where they started. Do you think that's their fuck-up, or that's the, 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 like, ghostly woods? Ghostly woods. Ghostly woods. Woods in control. Ghostly woods. Oof. Best character in the movie. It's like Evil Dead. Tries the trees didn't, you know, grab them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Guess they didn't have the budget for that. Tree? I'm no tree. I am an ant. <laughs> that would have been an interesting turn, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Ents, yeah. Oh, yeah, that would oh be good. God. So, Heather has no explanation for this. Josh's anger, frustration finally boils over. He turns the camera on Heather, starts taunting her about her ambition, her obsession. Says, you know, it's your fault we're here. It's your goddamn movie. <laughs> like, it's your fault. And she just collapses into tears. You've 
that's a bit much. You feel bad for her in this moment. Mike tries to calm things down. Josh keeps going. And then it's night again. They're forced to sleep in pretty much the same way as they slept the last night. Now they're too tired and emotional to even fight. And they discuss the food that they miss. Heather starts repairing a hole in Mike's jeans. Somehow Heather and Mike have bonded through all this. Yeah, well, yeah. Doesn't make much sense to me, but... <laughs> and again, keep in mind that through all this, all the dialogue is improvised. Yes. That's pretty remarkable. Yeah. They managed to even craft a narrative. He's like, just went with the flow. Next morning, Heather and Mike wake up, find that Josh has disappeared. They search the area around the campsite, can't find any sign of him. Mike thinks Josh has simply gone off for some alone time, but even after they packed up the tent and everything, he's still not there. Now they're demoralized, they're freaked out. Heather and Mike move on, trying to keep each other's spirits up. Night falls again, and they wake up to strange noises in the woods, including Josh's agonized screams. Mm-hmm. Yeesh. They stumble around in the dark looking for him. They don't find him, and it's impossible to tell where in the woods the screams are coming from. But it's definitely him. At daybreak, Heather finds a bundle of sticks held together with twine on the ground outside the tent. She picks it up, tosses it away. Heather and Mike are now just, they're too exhausted to move on. They spend the rest of the morning just kind of comforting each other. And later, Heather finds another bundle of twigs, this time with something inside. She opens it up, finds a piece of the fabric from Josh's shirt wrapped around hair and a piece of flesh and some teeth. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Unbelievable. This entire movie is built on implications. Yes. It's really smart. Mm-hmm. More than think about it. Like, eesh. Heather obviously breaks in hysterics, rushes to the stream, washes her hands before putting on her back, doesn't tell Mike about what she found. I can probably just spare him any more fear. Right. Yeah. By the way, I found Josh's teeth and skin over there. They're, he's probably dead. Let's yeah. Keep moving. Yeah, yeah. You ready to? You ready to? <laughs> You're next. Keep trekking. Ugh. So they keep hiking. They both pretty much know there's no way out. Their meanderings are becoming just random directionless. They're not even trying to make like any kind of direction now. No. Their mental states are collapsing. Mike starts chewing on a leaf to try to alleviate his hunger. That was one of the most desperate scenes I've ever seen in a movie, just crunching on a dry leaf. Yeah, fuck you, Mike. You fuck kick that map in the creek, you dumbass. <laughs> tastes like bad decisions. Yeah, it tastes like a map, I'm sure. <laughs> Fucking moron. That night, Heather videotapes her confessions, apologizing to her mother, Mike's, Mike and Josh's parents, and says, you know, it's my fault. I had to film the movie. I didn't know how to use a map. Yeah. And this is like, you know, the movie poster. Her yeah. eyes are right there. It's like the famous. Yep, most famous part. You Real, know, just, yeah, like right in her face. She says the line, no, I'm scared to close my eyes. I'm scared to open them. Yeah. Creepy. Yeah. I've, I've never, never been that scared. scared. Hope I'm not. That would suck. Yeah, well, I, I, I don't anticipate going into a witch-controlled, ghost-controlled woods. So You don't anticipate it, but you never know. You might just be wandering and end up somewhere. I hope not. That's how most horror movies end up. They just kind of... Sure, a lot of times they're like, let's go check that out. Yeah, for like specific... Yeah, yeah. But a lot of times they're just like, where am I? Mm-hmm. I feel like I'd be... Who am I? Yeah, I'd end up in that kind of situation. Because I know I would never be like, you know, oh, let's explore that haunted thing where those people died. <laughs> like, willingly? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Ugh. So later in the dead of night, they again hear Josh's voice closer, pleading for help. And they abandon the tent to go search for him. They follow Josh's voice, and they find a house in the middle of the woods. Just a messed up, abandoned house. And they go inside, there's runic symbols on the wall next to child-sized handprints. Good God. Just the little things like that. That stick in your head and just make you think, what the fuck happened here? What's really going on? Yeah. Josh's voice is coming from somewhere in the house. Mike rushes upstairs to find him. Mike then realizes the voice is actually coming from the basement and rushes down the steps. Suddenly, Mike is rendered silent and his camera falls. Heather, who's just completely hysterical at this point, goes in the house, sees Mike, and sees Mike in the corner of the room of the basement. She's going down the stairs. She sees him in the corner. His face is against the wall. 
And then you're immediately thinking, like, oh, he's he sending him in the corner before they kill him. Then Heather's camera's knocked down. She's rendered silent. Film's over. So, was it supernatural? Was it some psycho living in the woods? Was it the town? What the fuck happened? <laughs> yeah, Nobody yeah. really knows. Yeah, it's a, you know. It's open to interpretation. Exactly. Yeah, and that's, that's part of the genius of the, of the, the film. Yeah. Why it's a part of, you know, the horror, horror genre and horror history. Oh, for sure. How do you view it? Supernatural or otherwise? Um, I, I look at it as for my own, just for my own, like, viewing pleasure. I look, I look at it as a, like a controlled woods. Yeah. A, a, a entity, a ghost controlling, like you said, you know, mo- moving rivers or moving, tr- making things, you know. Yeah. You're trapped. Yeah. Yeah. If it wasn't for the sequels... I would think this is this is man-made. I watched a very compelling theory that we're going to get into it in a bit here about how there is no witch, mm-hmm. and Mike and Josh orchestrated this entire thing to kill Heather in the woods. And there's actually it makes sense. It's weird, but it makes up. I'm open to that. Yeah. There's this uh, this YouTube channel, Film Theory, that does really in-depth analysis of various fan theories of all sorts of stuff, and he did a play-by-play of like every incident where. It's like, it could be Mike and Josh versus Supernatural, and he gives you an explanation of how it's Mike and Josh and how like why this is all happening, and it made a good deal of sense. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I recommend checking that video out. Film Theory, Blair Witch. Yeah, Film Theory's great. Yeah, they're great. I love that guy. Matt Pat, here's some film guys and facts for you. Number one, Heather Donahue's mother received sympathy cards from people who believed that her daughter was actually dead or missing. I'm telling you, this 99 people were convinced. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Number two, the three leads believed the, Bla- the Blair Witch was a real legend during filming, though, of course, they knew the film was going to be fake. Only after the film's release did they discover that the entire mythology was made up by the film's creators. Number three, it took eight days to shoot this. But it took eight months to edit it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Number four, the reactions from Heather, Mike, and Josh when they discover they have walked south all day and ended up in the same spot, are real. They were genuinely upset that they had walked all day for nothing. Number five, one of the original script ideas was for a giant-sized version of the stick figure that chased, the st- chased them through the woods. This was rejected in favor of an enemy that was malevolent but never seen. They did not have anywhere close to the budget to pull that off. This had 60 grand, and I'm pretty sure all of that went towards renting the camera. Yes, yeah, no kidding. <laughs> Number six, this was cool. Before the film was released, the three main actors were listed as missing, presumed dead on IMDb. Yeah. That's fucking awesome. Yeah. There's a whole thing, man. Your poster's everywhere. And yeah. And number seven, here's the fan theory. Concerning the theory that Josh and Mike had planned and ultimately murdered Heather, many have questioned the motive for the crime. According to one of the initial drafts of the script, Heather and Josh used to be romantically involved and had broken up before the events shown in the film. It's even implied in Heather's diary that she and Josh have had a long history and have mentioned the tension between one another. Using this bit of information for the theory, this indicates that the tension between Heather and Josh is much worse. Their breakup may have been a very ugly one, which shows in their antagonistic behavior towards one another. They somehow decided to remain friends and went on to date other people, judging by Josh briefly mentioning his girlfriend in the film and Heather mentioning her boyfriend named Greg in her diary. However, Josh may have harbored such resentment and hatred toward her and wanted revenge. Thus, he enlists Mike and possibly a few other people to help him in his plan to murder Heather. I don't know. I mean, it would explain why Mike just randomly tosses the map into a creek. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I always, I've always, i always wondered why, like, can, can these guys not use a map? Can, can Josh not use a map? I mean, I'm not that concerned about it because admittedly, I can't use a map. Like, if I was trapped in the woods with a map, I would be dead. I don't know how to navigate a map. Hmm. I just don't, I don't quite know. That, that, whole, that whole part trips me up a lot. The whole map thing. Because none of, none of them know how to use it. I think it's the most glaring bit of evidence that they're trying to lure her as deep as yeah, possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why I'm kind of like, oh, all right, this makes a lot more sense now. Yeah. I'm kind of into this theory. Mm-hmm. Kind of into it. I mean, two and three kill this, but just the first movie? Yeah, yeah, of course. But I, yeah. Yeah. I mean, just at the end, you know, when when Matt's in the corner. Yeah, he's just staring at the wall. Mike, yeah. Mike, why did I say Matt? 
Mike's, Mike's in the corner. I mean, that, that could be just to amp Heather up significantly. And Josh hits Josh her in the head. Josh hits her in the head with something. Yeah, yeah. Being from behind her. That's why you don't see her. That's, that's why you don't see him. And that's why the film fucking ends. That's another thing for me with this is like the whole idea that it's real would be, well, how would the film just end conveniently right after? <laughs> the Blair Witch just kneels down and turns the camera off? Or is it Josh? Yeah. Saying, oh shit. Yeah. Mr. Cameraman can't just see committed us. a murder, turns, turns off the camera. camera. I got the chills right now. I'm telling you, man. I kind of like this. Watch, Watch this video. video. I'm explaining it okay, but this video is going to convince you. I like this a lot better yeah. than the... Yeah, this makes the movie better. I'll send you a link because <laughs> this blew my fucking mind. I've seen this movie enough to, like, remember all the little, you know, little plot. You know, it's only an hour and 20 minutes. Yeah. This makes sense. I've never seen it. This makes sense. Yeah, yeah. I'm in. Who explain why Mike, some dude that she's never even met, would totally be down to going deep into the woods to film the movie. And would, like, he, like, stays committed because they're like, we have to hold the group together, you know? Yeah. He, yeah. yeah. This is it. He becomes, like, this is her it. friend <laughs> for no reason. Yeah. While Josh alienates her further. It's almost like he's, you know, he's digging the grave as deep as possible before he hits her with the shovel. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I'm, yeah, this is it. This is it. <laughs> That's how I see it now, honestly. <laughs> I'll definitely watch film theory. I love film theory already, so yeah, man. surprised I haven't seen it yet. I'll check it out, man. Um, yeah, makes the movie more interesting. Oh, I sure. still can't stand the performances. <laughs> That's that's what I'll always get hung up on. Well, now we're, if you watch it with that mentality, yeah, it's, yeah. it's Josh and uh, yeah. Mike acting as douchebags <laughs> to get her yes. riled up. Yes, yes. <laughs> there you go. Cool. The first sequel was 2000's Book of Shadows, Blair Witch 2. Widely considered one of the worst horror sequels of all time. Have you seen it? I have not. Neither have I. I don't... I'm, I will, eventually. Maybe one day. When I'm really, really, really bored. In it, a group of tourists arrive in Burkittsville after watching the Blair Witch Project, and they spend the night in the woods, only to realize that something has attached itself to them. And when they get back to Burkittsville, something came with them. It isn't filmed with a handheld camera... It stars nobody of note, but it's still scored at the box office. Yeah. However, it has an IMDb score of 3.9, Rotten Tomatoes score of 14%. Everybody fucking hated this movie. Killed the franchise immediately. They were going to make a third movie, like, right then. That was killed. Nope. Yeah. I mean, why would you not film it with a handheld? That's the whole point of this movie. That's why people like this. Yeah. Ugh. People never, they never learn. Nobody learns. No. Then there was 2016's Blair Witch which brought back the found footage element and was filmed entirely in secret by VHS and Your Next director Adam Wingard. In it, Heather's brother James watches footage of his sister inside the house from the first film and goes hunting for her in the woods with a camera crew. I don't know why they brought a camera crew. Only to end up hunted himself. If I found out my sister was still alive after having been missing for like 16 years, I'm not going to go track down a camera crew to come with me. I'm going to go like... Get some, you know, some park rangers and some, you know, some soldiers. Somebody who can help me. Some fucking guns. Yeah, yeah. yeah. God some it. weapons. <laughs> it, was, it was filmed under the title of The Woods before being revealed as the third Blair Witch film at the 2016 San Diego Comic-Con. And I remember that being a huge deal. I remember that announcement. Caleb was like, dude, new Blair Witch. <laughs> Despite being commercially successful, it was still a dud for critics and fans alike. IMDb score 5.0, Rotten Tomatoes 36%. I have seen this one. And this one isn't bad. It just gets really weird. Like yeah. Really, really, really weird. It's basically Blair Witch Project with a budget. Okay. And they take it pretty damn far. You do get to see the witch, too. Yeah, nice. And it looks weird. It reminds me of Mama, but like shaved. Mm, interesting. Shaved Mama. Yeah. <sighs> Creepy. And there's some like elements of time travel. It's a very weird movie. Interesting. Blair Witch, the survival horror game, was released in August 2019 for PC and Xbox One. The game received mixed reviews with critics praising its atmosphere and graphics, but condemning its gameplay and its difficulty. And I have a PS4, so I have not played this, and I don't plan to. I'm not buying an Xbox for the Blair Witch game. No, thanks. <laughs> I've never thought much of the Blair Witch Project, but this most recent viewing finally won me over by scaring the shit out of me in a way I'd never had before. I give it an 8. Yeah, I um, oh, I gotta be honest. Uh, in my mind, the entire time we were recording, uh, the number was six. But this theory is kind of making me second guess that. 
So I'm going to bump it up to a seven. All right. Um, that, that theory is very cool. Uh, I'm kinda, I kind of can't stop thinking about it. Yeah, man. Because I like, I, I like, uh, here's like something that I immediately thought of because it's in, it's also in Maryland or in that, you know, in the area, you know, it's in Baltimore. It would be a serial, the podcast. They did a, you know, big 10 part. It got like real popular, you know, talking about Amin Helsan, uh, Amin, what was his name? I can't remember. He got convicted of murdering his girlfriend, like, and it's like a woods type thing. And I thought about that and I just thought about like, cause it was in the late nineties as well. I was thinking about like that, that whole, I don't know why I'm fascinated by it or why people are the, the, the like teenage and like young adult, te- like true crime is so fascinating to me. Yeah. And so this, that like changes the movie. Yeah. It completely changes the plot. I do not like the performances. I really don't. Like you said, it kind of changes, but I really like, they're just not good. Like, I don't, I don't, I, I just don't buy it half the time when she's like, Mike, Mike, I just, I don't buy her yelling. I've seen a lot of horror. I, I've seen a lot of crying and a lot of yelling and a lot of like, you know, straining. And I just don't, I don't, I don't buy it mainly from Heather. And she, she yeah, she pisses me off. So, uh, but, but stature wise, man, this movie's big. It's big, big, big. Yeah. And I'm not going to disrespect it at all. I, I totally understand why someone would like think it's their favorite horror movie. Because if you like this sort of thing, I get it. It's very atmospheric. It's very, yeah. uh, like you said, it's kind of up to your interpretation. That's, That's my favorite, favorite thing about it. Yeah. You can read it as supernatural. You can read it as they, they killed her. Yeah. You can read it as the rednecks killed That's her. That's fascinating. Yeah. I personally think, you know, the reason they, they were never found again is because Mike and Josh buried her deep and mm-hmm. skipped town. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Yeah. What a, fa- <laughs> what a fascinating, yeah, I, I yeah. <laughs> That's such an insane theory, but I love it. It's awesome. It makes sense. So before we reveal Friday's episode, Filmgasm contributor Caleb Leger sent me his thoughts on the Blair Witch Project. Let's see what he has to say. It seems like nothing has quite reached the type of status as that of the Blair Witch Project. Released in the 90s, the creator employed one of the greatest marketing ploys in film history. Due to both internet being in its infancy and found footage films not being too common, it was a lot easier to deceive an audience. How the directors go out of their way to deceive the audience? Well, they make it a point to make sure the audience legitimately thought this was actual events they were witnessing. A website was created to expand on the lore, utilizing fake archival photos and news stories to create a sense of authenticity. The actors signed agreements to not do any press or attend any premieres. I didn't know that. IMDb even listed the actors as deceased. Yeah. As for how they achieved this through the production of the film, simple. The crew pretty much terrorized the actors. They would mess with and steal their stuff in the middle of the night, and only the direction the actors were the only direction the actors were given was a map with the destination marked on it. That's awesome. All of this and more would lead to one of horror's biggest success stories. A film that made audiences truly believe what they were seeing was in fact real. A film considered one of the most terrifying amongst many, a legacy that is still felt to this day. But how does the Blair Witch Project hold up all these years later? Let me tell you what I think. The biggest things I want to talk about are the pacing and scares. A lot of people nowadays complain about how slow, boring, and not scary the movie is. And I get it. The Blair Witch Project relies heavily on what you don't see and atmosphere. For me personally, this is still incredibly effective. There are so many moments you spend wondering what's going on that a sense of unease starts to develop as the film progresses. The pacing works beautifully in allowing this to happen. The scares also work in turn because they are so subtle. It starts to dig into your skin after a while. Almost forget, as for the other, uh, sorry, almost forgot, as for the other major criticism pointed out by more modern horror fans, the ending, again, I get it. It's not exactly definitive. But again, I like it due to how it fits the overall idea of the movie. Instead of some lame explanation and dodgy CGI, we get nothing. Just the knowledge of our character's untimely demise. This, for me at least, has created an ending that is both deeply unsettling and instantly iconic. The Blair Witch Project is another iconic film of the horror genre, one that has admittedly faced some harsh criticisms from more modern audiences, and as I've been saying, I completely understand where they're coming from. But the film still holds up amazingly well, in my humble opinion. And if you're looking for a more modern take on this, then I urge you to check out the 2016 sequel, Blair Witch, a deeply underappreciated and unjustly hated sequel, which deserves way more love, 8 out of 10. Nice. Yeah, I pretty much agree with you. I had no idea they had to sign, like, NDAs. It's crazy. That's, that's awesome. <laughs> All right, man. So what are we doing for Friday? 
Friday, you know, obviously thinking about the woods, yeah. you know, um, initially I had, I, I think I had, cause it was, you know, Blair Witch is a massive, you know, 1999 film it's right at the end of that century. And I thought about like, you know, cause that, that year is so classic. That's a little too lazy though. Let's go to the woods. And uh, immediately we thought of, you know, John Hughes classic, The Great Outdoors from 1988. <laughs> the Great Star- Outdoors. Starring John Candy and Dan Aykroyd. You know, uh, le- absolute legends. Uh, rest in peace, John Candy. It's just awesome movie. Yeah. Uh, you know, and that Bending's debut. So yeah, going to be a lot of fun to talk about. We're going from evil camping to fun camping. Yeah, very fun camping. Yeah. Game. Hilarious, hilarious movie. Anybody home? <laughs> Great to talk about. Can't wait. So, let's see what happened this week in film. Disney has announced a PG-13 rating for their upcoming war epic Mulan, making this the first PG-13 rating of their live-action remakes. Kind of surprising, honestly. Yeah. I didn't think they were, they were going to do that. Especially with no Sean Yu. Yeah. Well, that we know of. I still think uh, Jason Scott Lee's playing Sean Yu's kid. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Fuck yeah. Torture porn legend Eli Roth is in talks to direct a movie based on the popular video game series Borderlands. Be interesting. I know nothing about that game. I used played. to play that game. Is it good? Yeah, the uh, intro song was uh, Ain't No Rest for the Wicked by Cage the Elephant. <laughs> it's pretty cool, yeah. You think Eli Roth would do a decent film out of that? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Cool. Be entertaining, yeah. A new Star Wars movie has been announced with slight director J.D. Dillard directing and Luke Cage writer Matt Owens penning the script. It will supposedly take place on the Sith planet of Exegol that was revealed in The Rise of Skywalker. No word yet on whether it will be theatrically released or dropped on Disney+. Plus. God, can we slow the fuck down on Star Wars for a year? Just one year where we don't have anything so we can regroup and enjoy this again? For God's sake. Yeah, they're making it a task. Stop man. shoving it down our goddamn throats. Yeah, it's a task. At least Marvel, like, they have a lot, but they hit, it's all good. Yeah. Star Wars, yeah. it's like hit or miss these days. Exactly. And that sucks. I'm tired of this shit. I never thought I'd say that, but I'm fucking over Star Wars. God. Uh, Uh, Welcome to the club. It hurt me to say, man. (laughs) Chris Evans may be in talks to join the upcoming remake of Little Shop of Horrors as sadistic dentist Oren Scrivello DDS, a role previously played to perfection by Steve Martin in 1986. (laughs) That's a very interesting choice, but I'm on board. Uh, Yeah, I'm in. I love seeing him in Knives Out. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. He could play a sadistic douche really well. Also rumored for the film are Taron Edgerton and Scarlett Johansson, as well as Billy Porter as the voice of Audrey 2. It's shaping up to be a very interesting uh, remake. Yes. Wow. I was against this from the beginning, but now that they've started announcing people, I'm like, you know what? Let's I'm see gonna where this check, goes. I'm going to check it out. Yeah. Let's see where this goes. And finally, former movie mogul and serial rapist Harvey Weinstein has been found guilty of two of his five charges in his New York County trial. He will be convicted of one count of criminal sexual assault in the first degree, based on the testimony of former Project Runway production assistant Miriam Haley, and rape in the third degree, based on the testimony of one-time aspiring actress Jessica Mann. He will be sentenced on March 11th, where he's looking at potentially 5 to 25 years for the sexual assault, and 18 months to 4 years for the third degree rape. Regrettably, he was acquitted of two counts of predatory sexual assault, which carries a life sentence. Weinstein still faces four charges in Los Angeles County Court. So, yeah, we got a conviction. Probably not going away for a while, but I'm confident in that his power is dead. He's never hurting anyone this way again. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck you, Harvey. It's just so unfair. Like, he got away with this for so long. Yeah. It was never a secret either. Everyone just, it was a running gag. There's jokes at the Oscars about it. Like, fuck, man. Everyone knew, but nobody did dick. Yeah. The more I read about this story, the more it really disturbs me. Yeah, it gets under my skin. Yeah. And it it's, it's really sucks that he's involved in so many movies that we we all, that everybody loves, the yeah. movie world loves. Ah, it sucks. It's not, it's not fair. It's not. You know? But I'm glad that the Weinstein Company is dead. I'm glad Harvey Weinstein is at least going to prison for some time. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's where, it, that's where I feel like, you know, like, oh my God, this guy, this guy. He's going to potentially only get like five, six years. I hope they make, since he was pretty much the beginning of the Me Too movement, the face of it. I hope they make a, I yeah. want them, yeah. Make an example. Exactly. Yeah. 25 years to life. I hope so. Fuck. God, I fucking hope so. Yeah. I, Cause yeah, there's, there's Put guys, him away. there's guys who go to prison for like holding a little bit of marijuana. I'm like, come on, man. 
This is a monster. Yeah, this guy yeah. raped so many women. Ruined lives. Yeah. Destroyed so many lives, so many careers. Uh, yeah, he's a goddamn monster, and he better he, he, he deserves to die. I want him to put him to death, but they won't do that. Yeah, that's, yeah. Oh, man. I know. Well, sorry to end on such a bleak note. But no, thanks. I'm sure, I'm sure everybody's with us. You know, it's yeah. pretty much worldwide. Fuck Harvey. Yeah, yeah. fuck him. Thanks, thanks for listening, everybody. Next, next week is a very special episode. It'll mark the one-year anniversary of the Filmgasm podcast, so we're going to do something we've never done before. We're going back to the Overlook Hotel, back to room 237. We are redoing the first episode of the podcast, 1980s The Shining. Austin will be joining me this time as we give The Shining the deep dive it deserves. In addition, we'll spend a significant amount of time talking about, uh, uh, sorry, talking about how much this all means to us, how far the podcast has come, the origins of Filmgasm, the friendships that have evolved from this thing. It's going to be very personal, very entertaining. It's going to be an anniversary extravaganza. We all cannot wait. Oh, man. Until then, don't get lost in the woods looking for a local legend. If you do, don't toss the map in the creek like an asshole and end up in the basement of a deranged ghost slash serial killer slash monster slash Mike and Josh. Don't be a Mike. Yeah. Don't be a Mike. Don't be a Mike. Don't be a Josh. Don't be a Heather. Don't be any of these motherfuckers. <laughs> Be the woods. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll see you Friday.